Previously, we talked a little bit about the engine we picked up from a junkyard to rebuild for this season of Down the Block and Back. Today, we're gonna start breaking it down. I'm Frank Maurice. Welcome back to Ratchet and Frank TV. The first thing we have to do is remove the turbocharger from the engine, and that means removing the intake from the turbocharger. That funny looking thing on the side of the turbo intake is the discharge air recirculation valve, but the function of that is for another video. Now let's just focus on the turbo. The amount of snap-on I've shown you so far, you probably think I'm either really good or really bad at what I do. While this coolant pipe isn't on the turbocharger, it is getting in the way of the camera stand, and it has to come off the engine eventually, so why not just do it right now? Two birds with one stone, if you feel me. You'll see pipe seals like this all over Mac and Volvo engines. Sometimes they have little tabs like this that press and lock them in. Other times they just press in for an interference fit. With this pipe out of the way, now I'll focus on the intake. I'll use a rubber mallet to break the seal and then I'm gonna shimmy the intake off using my hands. I'm gonna really try and pull this intake directly forward off the turbocharger because if I cock it to the side, I'm gonna hit the turbine blades and I'm probably gonna break one of them. They're made of a material called Inconel that's great under temperatures, but it happens to be extremely fragile. Throughout this entire video, I'm using a creeping oil known as Aerocroil. This stuff is really awesome and you can see the turbine shaft free right up. If you're wondering why I'm not soaking the thing like I would with penetrating oil, it's because this stuff is pretty expensive and it costs like 40 bucks a can. But I'll say it again, the stuff is absolutely amazing and it has an unforgettable smell. This braided hose will supply coolant to the bearing house of the turbocharger. These coolant lines always get stuck up like this, but if you give the metal curve part a little tap with your wrench, they'll pop right off. The next piece of the puzzle is this large coolant crossover pipe that comes directly out of the water pump. I was actually a little worried about this because usually these are super, super tight. However, I got blessed by God and it was actually loose for me. There's still a couple of things I want to share with you about these pipes. You see how I'm removing it right now from the lower end? It won't ever do this unless you have all of the brackets off of it. And that's why it came loose. You see the old anti season there. I want to also point out that I left all the brackets on before I even took the pipe off. I did this for a reason. It's because I need the support from the brackets in order to break that pipe loose. But again, we got really lucky because it was already loose and I didn't actually need that extra support. There's two brackets that connect to the edge of the cylinder head right above the manifold and then there's one P-clamp that's lower down right by the edge of the water pump. Even with all the brackets off, this pipe is still a pretty tight fit. I'm going to show you a cool trick that I use to pop this thing right out. Using the mouth of the EGR cooler as an anchor point, use a large bar and pry upwards on the curved point of the pipe and it will pop right out. A lot of times the pipe seal stays behind inside the bore, be sure to go back and get it. And if you're going to reinstall this, clean that bore out before you slip the new seal on the pipe and press it in. Now we're going to remove the coolant return line from the VGT actuator. If you're wondering why we're not going to remove the supply line first, it's because it's missing from the engine. This VGT actuator actually gets its supply from a port in that larger pipe we just removed earlier. This line then feeds the coolant back down towards the oil cooler. Pay close attention here and you'll see a little bit of water come out of this line as I remove it from the actuator. No big deal, that's probably just rainwater that accumulated inside of the turbo over time. This other large braided hose at the back of the turbocharger will return coolant to the oil cooler from the bearing house. If you're doing this job for the first time, do not remove this line from the back of the turbocharger. Instead, always remove it from the oil cooler. I have had these lines lock up on me in the field, so you see I give it a one-two tap here. A good mechanic absolutely knows how far he could push something before it breaks. Never hesitate if you feel like you're going to break something. Go grab the torch, put a little bit of heat on it, and one way or another, it's gonna come off. Don't ever pull on these lines. Instead, just give them a little tap a -roo and they will pop out. While we're up here, I'm going to break loose the turbocharger mounting bolts. To do this, my favorite tool ever is an offset combo wrench. And before you ask me why I don't just jam the ratchet in there, it's because a ratchet simply will not fit. But a 12 millimeter offset combo wrench will. And I like to put a little piece of straight pipe on it to give me a little bit of extra leverage. These always work fantastic. 
I know a lot of guys like to use the flex head wrenches as well with the ratcheting ends, like a 14 millimeter flex head ratchet wrench. So you could get to these, but I like an offset wrench because I feel like it's a little bit stronger. And if it does not work in one direction, as you're going to see here in a second, I could flip it over and it usually works the other way. This is a great example of mechanical patience. You see, I knew the wrench was gonna strip the bolt out or do something I didn't want. So I flipped it over, tried a different direction and it popped right loose. Now I'm not gonna actually take the turbo off entirely right now because I still have the oil drain and the oil feed down on the bottom end of it. Now I definitely can see why it may seem backwards to break loose the turbocharger bolts without removing that feed and drain, but it's just the way that I do things. And you're gonna hear me say this all the time. There are many ways to skin the cat. The larger of these two pipes is the turbocharger oil drain. It drains the oil directly back down to the oil pan right below cylinder number four. The other one is the turbocharger oil feed, which will get its oil from the oil filter housing right above the full flow bypass filter. You can see as I attempt to remove the oil feed from the bottom of the turbocharger, the braided line spins out with the collar. This is super important because if I were to continue spinning, I would totally ruin the braided line. As to avoid this, we'll grab the braided line with a pair of vice grips and then break free the collar. This happens all the time with these type of hoses. Don't ever chance it. Grab it before you twist it and break it. I've always thrown a bungee strap around the VGT and tied it off to something on the engine. This helps keep the tension off the mounting bolts while I remove them completely. Once the mounting bolts are out, it's as easy as lifting the turbo slightly and taking a big step back. That's all we're going to do for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I will see you next time on Ratchet and Frank TV.